Pelicans. So this week, Pelicans coach Stan Van Gundy appeared as a guest on the Intersection with Jason Page podcast. And when discussing NBA priorities, Van Gundy said the following, quote, the one thing I will criticize the league office and other people who say safety is our number one concern. No, no, it's not. It's your number two concern. Your number one concern, that's making money. Your number two concern is while we're making the money, let's try to keep everyone as safe as we can. Let's just be honest about that. Max, are these Stan Van Gundy comments a big deal or no big deal? Max up first. I mean, look, he's telling the truth. It, it, it's it's no big deal because even Stan Stan Van Gundy is a is a man like he'll tell you what he thinks he's not afraid and and he's just it's not like Stan's doing there sitting there going listen to this profound thought I have he's like hey everybody it's a business you know it's like getting a question for a shark that's what a shark does a business by definition all it is is making money that's all a business cares about. And then you have certain, even in terms of even in terms of like the good outreach they do in the community. Sure, that's about the people in the business who actually care about that. But it's also very much about the bottom line because we exist in a in a in a in a culture where you at least have to show forward, you know, public facing that you do care about it because that also affects your bottom line. Of course, the number one priority is making money, and I don't think Stan thinks he's making a big deal. He's just stating what's obviously true. Well, that might be true. Um, well, first of all, what he's saying is on the money. But let's not act like it's a bad thing. The fact of the matter is, is that people ain't playing for free. They ain't working for free. There's an economy. You know, one of the things that I, that, 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 that I religiously brought up, and I've been bringing this up from day one, I said safety of human beings obviously is paramount. We all get that. But you know something, Max? I have a mortgage. I had bills in my home and what have you. Regardless of what was going on during this pandemic, there was never a month went by that I didn't receive those bills. I never saw one company say, COVID-19 is going on, you don't have to pay. They're coming for their money. So when you talk about people's quality of life, when you talk about people's abilities to feed their family, keep a roof over their head and things of that nature, we can't ignore that reality. And so, obviously, when we're talking about the NBA, we take into account the millions of dollars some of these players, all of these players are making, basically. And we take into account what the coaches get paid and all that stuff. What we ignore repeatedly is the thousands upon thousands of people these sports leagues employ. And we can't ignore that. I'm not saying that you shove aside safety. I'm not saying that you don't prioritize the health of human beings and things of that nature, Spike. What I'm saying is, let's stop acting like it's a crime to pay attention to economics as well. Because bills got to get paid. That's just the reality of the situation. And when we and when folks speak like like Stan Van Gundy is is I love Stan Van Gundy. He's incredibly honest. I wish they do a better job defensively because last night they got blown out by 30 by Minnesota, which is a different subject for another day. I mean, damn, that's a different subject. He wishes too. that's a different subject. But I applaud and respect his honesty. But Stan Van Gundy ain't coaching for free. The NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, and everybody else in between have a right to want to pay attention to the economics when nobody's playing for free. I mean, listen, the NCAA tournament is going on, and Jay Billis comes on my show yesterday, Stephen A's World, on ESPN Plus, and specifically states there will be an NCAA tournament. The NCAA made that very clear. They said because we got – we got rights to fulfill. We have no choice. The NCAA tournament will march forward. Why? Economics. Let's, let's grow up and stop acting like, oh, my God, this, uh, somebody is so wrong for paying attention to that. When you get in a check, too. That's all I'm saying. Spike? Well, we live in an American capitalist society. Yeah. And... Money talks, BS walks. And what's in Ford, not, and what I'm going to say right now, and it's not really talking about the NBA, but there's been many, many cases where decisions were made in favor of the money and people died. I mean, that's, 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 that's not a newsflash. The cigarette industry knew way, way back what cigarettes did. They hit it. And that's not the only example. 
money. I mean, we live in a country where people will get on bended knee and kneel before the altar of the almighty dollar. And if people got to die, that's the cost of doing business. Well, let, let me say it's one not thing. not new. Let, let me say one thing about that. Stephen A., you, bring, you brought it up about, and, and, and Spike, you sound like you're saying, hey, this is not new and maybe it's not the greatest thing, but this is the truth. And in the cigarette company case, they also added nicotine, which is addictive. So not only do they know it's killing you, they're having you to take more and more of it because they're trying to make money. And I bring up the point that corporations, businesses are in the business of, that's their existence is about making money. That's what they do. Getting mad at them for it's like getting mad at like a, a shark for eating. Like that's what it does. But it's how you make the money though. That's, that's the difference. This is, this is what I'll say about what Stephen A. brought up. How you're kind of defending it in a way, Stephen A. Like, hey, they have an economy. We like to think that we believe human life has infinite value. <clears throat> but we don't. People generally don't. If you hear about a, a, a crash on a car, a train, a plane, and you hear two people die, you feel worse than if one did. You know, and, and that means that not every, it means that you can have more tragedy than a single human life. Infinity times two is still infinity, and yet you feel worse. It's a bigger tragedy, meaning we don't believe it has, each life has infinite value. And if people don't think that, that corporations even do cost-benefit analysis or governments in terms of human life, you're crazy. That absolutely that was done. I think most of the, the issue with the pandemic, for example, is people believe the previous administration, they, they didn't agree with their calculation. They thought, no, 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 they're placing too great an emphasis on the economy, not a great enough emphasis on human life. I totally but, agree. Yeah, but not that, not that we all believe that we should take no risks at all in order to have an economy. I don't disagree with anything you or Spike is saying. I'm just saying there is a reality that yeah. is inescapable. Real talk, of, real talk. Uh, because of it being perpetual, that we got to stop acting like we're above. The fact of the matter is, is that, Max, you and I never took a day off when the pandemic hit. Do you know that? When sports stopped, when the NBA was canceled March 11th, Spike, Max Kellerman, and myself, and Molly Kieran was on this airwaves every day. I'm sorry. Doing work, doing me, work. We were doing work and took pay cuts. But let me be very clear. We got something. We got enough to pay our bills. It ain't an accident. You understand? I'm just saying, let's not be phony about that. And I'm not accusing Stan Van Gundy because I love Stan Van Gundy. I'm not accusing him or anybody else of being that way. I'm just saying, this is the world we live in. Let's not act like we don't know it. And we're not participants in it. And to some degree, enablers of it. Yeah, the we are. The question is, is not whether or not we, are, we participate. Obviously, everyone does. The question is the degree to which we participate how we value the risk versus the reward and okay. all of that. Okay, yeah. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Guys, we've got time for one more. I want to do yeah. this. So a recent article by our Kevin uh, Artovitz about three-point shooting has created conversation lately in the NBA. The article notes that some execs and coaches worry that the NBA might finally be reaching a critical mass. Some say the three-point ball has created a monotonous rhythm to the game, and others say that it has distorted the scoring system, Adam Silver, joined Mike Greenberg's radio show yesterday, had this to say. We're constantly looking at tinkering at the game. We've moved the three-point line. As you recall, we moved it in once, then we moved it back out, then we moved it to a slightly different place on the floor. I think as the, as the caliber of the shooting has gotten better, I mean, my early days in the league, everyone used to complain there was too much dunking. And that, and that we had a lot of great athletes in the league, but they weren't skilled in the way that you see a lot of these players now. So are we at the right balance? I'm sure there may be some adjustments we, we can make. I mean, I think, again, there's, there's so much great about the game right now. But the three-point line in particular is something we'll continue to look at. Stephen A., where Leave are you it on alone. Do you think there's a problem with the three-point line? Not really. I mean, not, you can make the really. argument that it's a problem. I would tell you it depends on the team. I would tell you, if you're looking at the New York Knicks, hell yeah. If you're looking at the Golden State Warriors, the Utah Jazz, uh, 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 you know, a couple other teams, I would tell you no. I mean, it depends. I, we're not complete. Let me ask you a question. When Steph Curry took the league by storm and was raining threes, did we complain? Last Only time I ever saw Spike Lee complaining about threes was when Reggie Miller hit him. I never saw him complaining when John Starks hit him. Okay? So, so, 
I mean, excuse me, wait a minute now. Shooting is a part of the game. Now, if you want to change a rule, for example, let's just say when Wilt Chamberlain was dominating the league because he was a foot taller than practically everybody else, you can understand why the rim needed to be a bit higher. You understand? Or you wanted to outlaw Duncan because of my God. Yeah, but what about the Lou Alcindor when UCLA and they outlawed Duncan? That's right. The the Lou Alcindor and UCLA. But, but, but check this out. Guy but, but, but check this. And if you wanted to sit up there and say, here's the only modification I would consider about the three-point shot, y'all. Move it back at six inches to a full foot. That's it. Make it a little bit harder. Well, That's all. This is my Outside feeling of that, that, please. They'll just start learning right how to hit that. Is. Here's the problem. The most efficient way to play a sport is not necessarily the most pleasing, right? In MMA, they, st- they start, you know, gra- it turns out, just grappling and little maneuvers. So eventually the UFC said, no, no, y'all got to stand up. You can't just spend the whole time on the floor. They just changed the rules. And is this, a, is this product a little monotonous with the threes? Yes, it is. Let's not. Look, when Steph was doing it, he was the only one doing it. Now everyone's bombing threes all the time. Some dude's taking 10, 11 threes a game. Team's taking 50 threes in a game. It's making the product worse. They should figure out a way to fix it. I would suggest this. Why, why is that the only shot worth three points? And why is it, is the points always award, why is it always awarded by distance? Why not have certain areas, even in the interior or in the mid-range, worth, worth three? Maybe if you have a defender on you or something like that. You, there are ways to tinker with it so other shots are also worth extra, an extra point or have extra value so that you get the kind of game you want to see. I don't love this with just three, 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 three. That's not the basketball I grew up with. Well, I think to be a three-point play with a sky hook. Why has no one... <laughs> who else does that? And I, I, I asked Kareem this. He says, I try to... No, even on the Lakers, he was trying to, you know, tell some of the centers, just show them how to do it. And no one wants to do the, the sky hook. Yeah. Magic did it. Had the baby hook. Yeah, I mean... Magic and Ring play together, though. Yeah, of course. I don't give a damn about no th- three-point play for no sky hook. Spike, what's he going fresh. on? He knows Spike's right. Oh, that's right. So what? That's just a move. I mean, so, so what? Well, Why not give an extra point no, for a no, move? No, no, no. You shoot 24 that's, feet away from the basket. That's, that's something entirely difficult different. Shot. What's wrong with you? Give an extra point for a dunk. That's ridiculous. Spike Lee, we'll see you courtside. Thank you for being with Maybe. us. Thank you for showing us what loyalty really is. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. 